Having completed the primary MMU3 module, we proceed to a relatively straightforward aspect of the setup, the assembly of the cassette buffer and spool holders. We'll start with the cassette buffer, which helps hold filament that's pulled away from the printer by taking up the extra slack without becoming tangled. Starting with the plates themselves then, begin by peeling off the protective plastic from either side of each plate. This is one of those things you'll either love or hate. Have to admit I'm in the latter camp, but nevertheless with that tedious task out of the way, we can proceed to reach for the larger of our 3D printed parts, the segmenter and the buffer leg. With both in hand, proceed to slot the printed leg into the openings on one end of the segmenter, far enough so that the holes on both parts line up nicely. Next, insert two M3 square nuts into the middle, just above the leg we just installed. Repeat the same process at the opposite end of the segmenter, making sure they're pushed all the way down into the recess. Ok, so with the segmenter in hand and the leg facing downwards, Proceed to insert the first buffer sheet into the marked openings on one side. Take special note of orientation here, the flat side of the buffer is alongside the segmenter leg, while the protruding end is facing upwards. With that confirmed, proceed to insert the remaining 5 plates into the segmenter until all slots are filled. With all plates in place and with the orientation double checked, so flat side at the bottom along with the segmenter leg, we can go ahead and insert two M3x30 screws in the top and bottom to secure the three plates on one side in place, just loosely for the moment so that the threads just catch. Before repeating the same with another two M3x30 screws on the opposite side. With that done we can reach for the printer holder, this long part here, and proceed to insert two M3 square nuts into the thinner segmented end of the holder. This needs to sit at the bottom of our buffer assembly. At this point, bear in mind the segmented face plate faces the rear of the printer, so away from you in this orientation. So with that in mind, install the printer holder depending on which side of the printer your cassette will be housed. With the plates lined up, insert and tighten an M3x30 screw into the open side. And another on the opposite side, for which an Allen key ball end is required. Take care not to over tighten these screws, just tighten until snug. After which we can revisit the screws we inserted earlier and give them a final tighten, again only until snug. Starting to take shape now, so with the plates in place we need to secure the remaining corners with these smaller plate holders, covering the sets of holes in each corner of the buffer assembly until they clip into place. These simply keep the space between each plate uniform and ensure one gap isn't smaller than another, as well as keep the entire structure rigid. And that's the main buffer housing complete, so with that done, time to move on to the cassettes that slot inside. Starting with the wheels then, insert a single bearing into the center, enough so it sits completely flush inside, before repeating the process across the remaining four wheels. With wheels prepared, take a cassette housing segment and proceed to insert three M3 nuts into one side. These should go in relatively easily. With that done, flip the part over and insert a small metal shaft into the centre. Drop on a prepared wheel so that the shaft feeds through the bearing. And cover with the other cassette half, pushing firmly into place to ensure that shaft engages with the top segment also before using three M3x6 screws to join both parts together, driving the screws into the nuts we previously inserted. A fourth screw slides into the handle end, which you'll be driving straight into the plastic, and then flip the unit over and insert a fifth M3x6 screw into the last remaining hole on the opposite side, again going straight into plastic here, so a nice snug fit is all that's needed. That's one cassette completed with the wheel rotating completely freely. Repeat the same process on the remaining cassettes, so insert nuts, insert the shaft so it seats into the bottom segment, the wheel, and cover with the top segment, pressing the shaft into place, before securing with four M3x6 screws on one side, and the final on the opposite side. Once complete across the remaining units, you should have five cassettes built and ready. Ensure the wheels on each turns freely. To finish off we need to insert these small collets, two into each cassette. Both push fit into the edge with the handles, you may find it easier to squish the small fins together while you insert the collet into the opening. 
Repeat the same across all remaining cassettes. And that's it, construction complete. To insert the cassette into the buffer assembly, hold it by the two handles. Squish the handles together while inserting until it locks into place. Repeating the same across all five cartridges. As a final step, take five of the long 650mm PTFE tubes and insert into the top row of collets across all five cassettes, before using the PTFE clip to join the tubes together approximately around the middle. So with the cassette buffer now complete, the only other accessory left are the spool holders, which are relatively quick and easy to construct. Of course you'll get five sets of spool holders in the kit, and the build process is the same with all five. So starting with a base, insert two wheels into either end, and cover with the opposite side, pressing firmly until both sides meet. With that done, repeat the same process to construct a second unit. So base, wheels, cover with the opposite side, and press together. Next we'll need our adhesive foam pads. It may look like one piece, but bend to separate them out, and proceed to place two pads on the center bends within the opening another two pads on one end, and a final two on the opposite side, again repeating the same on the second unit. So with both ready now, we can go ahead and reach for the spool holder guide, and hook the end of the PTFE holder, being the only 3D printed part in the assembly, onto one side of the guide in this orientation, before pushing down into the guide until it fully engages and locks into place. Insert one of the built spool holder feet into each end of the guide. And with that, the spool holder is complete. Repeat the same process across the remaining four included holders, until you have a total of five units. The five units do have protrusions on the edges of the guide holders that can be used to lock the spool holders to each other, depending on how you wish to place them beside or behind the printer. And that's it, cassette buffer and all spool holders constructed and complete. So the way this works is the filament spools sit on the spool holders, feeding the filament into the buffer and around the wheel, and then going straight into the rear of the MMU3 control unit itself, where the selector chooses and feeds the printer extruder. Talking of the extruder, some changes are required so that it's ready to accept a multi-material setup, namely the removal of the filament sensor and adding some more robust parts although this does depend upon the printer model in use, and that's one to be covered in the next video.